Hey guys, what is up? It's Biff, and in today's episode on the Fearless Mods Garage, we're gonna continue diagnosing this 1994 Pontiac Trans Am, digging into it with our Pico Scope to see if we can, this time, look into the OptiSpark signals that we're getting from the PCM. So we can determine if we're doing everything we need to get that ignition system working properly. So if you wanna see how we tackle it using the Pico Scope on this particular application, stay tuned. Right now I've got all four leads going to the OptiSpark probed and while I'm still not getting an overall nice square wave, I'm still getting the information that verifies that I am seeing all of those slots. Uh, it is interesting how these interplay, right? Even the low res signal is getting impacted once every degree and conversely, all the other signals are getting influenced by my low res signal, the, the larger slots because every time I have one of these things, it, it fluctuates the other ones as well. Let me do some research and some thinking, and I'll update you, and then we'll do another run and see what it does. A, B, C, D, low res, high res, ignition feed, and reference low. We can see here we got our reference low, the skinny slots, and the, the wider ones starting here you go, small, medium, large, largest is off screen, small, medium, large, largest. And let's get the voltages here. Looks like five volts at the top, down here around zero at the bottom. Good square wave, so that's looking really good. Let's look at our high res signal at zero and five, so good clean square wave on that one as well. So C is our ignition feed. I was definitely having some questions with regard to the ignition feed and the reference low signal. So I did pull up the service manual and look at that particular um, chart for the PCM connections. It just says that you should have eight plus volts. I'm sitting right at battery voltage with the alternator charging of about 13.1, 13.2 volts. Those little spikes are showing about a three volt fluctuation. That can just be some noise in the system and nothing to concern ourselves with. As for the reference low signal, it should be zero volts, but it has a star. And on that star, it says less than 0.5 volt. And if you look at what we're getting here, our center line is essentially at zero volts for this. And with the spikes that are occurring on that, the ones down here are about 0.2 volt. And the tall spikes that appear to occur once per cylinder are at roughly one half volt. So by double checking the manual with respect to what we're seeing from the Pico scope, the signals coming from the PCM are exactly what we expect to see going to the Opti and just makes it even more evident that we've got a secondary ignition problem. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and plug in the scanner and clear the codes, uh, if there are any, so that we can go ahead and start it up and give it the run check. Okay, so once again, we have gone through, tried disconnecting the negative of the battery for 30 seconds, putting it back on, removing the PCM battery fuse, and then the PCM ignition fuse, and letting it set for 10 minutes, and that also did not get rid of the eight codes. So that's a little concerning. I don't know why we can't get rid of those codes. Please let me know if you have any suggestions for how I can clear those. I'm gonna go back to my um, primary and secondary ignition, Opti ignition, and maybe I'll pick another signal from the Opti or maybe I'll go with three. And then we're gonna run this thing and see if it, uh, if it misbehaves. Still smells rich. Still appears to be running a little bit rough. Okay, so what did we get with that run? We have primary current and primary voltage. That looks great, but we don't have consistent firing lines along here, and that's puzzling. The coil in general is doing pretty good. We're gonna do one more run. This time we're gonna stay with coil primary current, coil primary voltage, and then we're also gonna get coil secondary output and plug wire secondary output. So what we have here is pretty much a live run. I put a trigger on the number one cylinder. So you see the uh, current ramps for the coil. You see the primary voltage for the coil coming from the ignition control module. 
You see the coil secondary here. You see all the pieces of the ignition process. Whereas for the secondary on the plug wire, you don't get all of those same ignition processes. You just get the spark plug fire. So I'm starting to see a few interesting things go on here. Again, this is very low resolution. We'll be able to look more closely at it. You can see the coil sloping downward at the top for sure, but we're still only talking like dropping from 6.7 amps down to 6.2, so that's doing pretty good. In the coil secondary, you see some low firing, you know, some consistent firing lines here. You actually get some higher fire li firing lines here, which is interesting, and then they start to come back down again. And in that same area, we're getting a dip down here on the baseline. And then same thing on the spark secondary, spark plug secondary. We, the bottom line, which should be at zero, is now dropping down a little bit low. You can see how we're looking here real time. Primary voltage, we're showing it around 8.7. So that has dropped. But our firing lines all look, they're all pretty much going overage, which means we're getting some really good sparks. So primary is looking pretty good. Our secondary, we're starting to get these ramps. You can see them in here every now and then, like this. And our spark lines are not looking good. We're getting inconsistencies and ramps, just like in, in the uh, coil secondary. So this clearly, to me now, looks like something in the secondary. We know that we have replaced the coil, so primary and secondary windings in the coil should be functioning properly. Um, I'm now leaning towards we need to go into the Optus part. Okay, so there you have it guys. We still have an issue going on in the secondaries with some of those oddities that we're seeing in the signal and in the plug wire circuits. Most likely we're gonna be digging into the Optus part and changing that cap and rotor if not the entire system. But before we do that, in the next video, most likely I'm gonna do a relative compression check and start back probing maybe some of those PCM connections to see what some of those other signals are doing for us and maybe even dig into the fuel pump in that system just a little bit, just to rule out any other thing that could be pointing us towards digging back into that Opti. But anyway, I hope you're enjoying these kind of in-depth uh, diagnostics for the Pontiac Trans Am. We're learning more on it every day and getting closer and closer to being able to solve this and getting this thing running right. So guys, thanks for watching. Please remember to reach down there and like and subscribe. Come back and keep watching us for more content and we'll catch you again real soon. Take care.